Deadpool vs Thanos Who wins when an immovable object meets an unstoppable farce? Guys, it is the Mad Titan vs the Merc with a mouth, and everyone's wondering who's gonna come out on top. Fasten your seatbelts and keep your hands and feet inside the Thanos copter at all times, because this one's a doozy. Written by Tim Seeley and illustrated by Elmo Bondock, Deadpool vs Thanos is a space-hopping, supernatural, swashbuckling adventure filled to the brim with all manner of twists and turns. The four-part Marvel miniseries pits swords against stones, brawn against, well, less brawn, with one all-important question looming large over every page. Who will take home the gold? And if you're thinking Thanos' victory in this particular matchup may seem inevitable, just remember that the regenerating degenerate loves nothing more than proving everyone wrong when the chips are down. So without further ado, let's get into the action. Deadpool vs Thanos Part 1 The first issue of Deadpool vs Thanos opens up with Thanos brutally murdering Deadpool. Well folks, looks like we have our answer. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time. But in all seriousness, even from the outset, things look bleak for our friendly neighborhood mercenary. Before we get into the meat and bones of the issue though, let's get anyone who may not be up to speed on the unique history of these two characters caught up. The story of Wade Wilson's time at Weapon X granting him an incredible healing factor and lifelong emotional trauma is well known. What's less well known is that Thanos once magically cursed Deadpool with eternal life to prevent the Merc from ever joining his one true love and Thanos' schoolyard crush, Death in the Afterlife. Yes, you heard that right, safe to say these two have history. So you can imagine our shock when, in the first pages of Deadpool vs Thanos, the Mad Titan declares, I take my gift back and murders Deadpool outright. But how and why would Thanos take back his curse? Well, as it turns out, a few days earlier, Deadpool had infiltrated Doctor Doom's secret vacation island, go figure, caught the good doctor with his pants down, and pumped the infamous dictator full of lead. While basking in his victory, something the Fantastic Four and even the Avengers had continually failed to accomplish, Doctor Doom seemingly rises from the dead, shotgun wounds to the chest and all, and casually blasts Deadpool to Timbuktu. As Deadpool is accustomed, each time he is dealt a mortal blow, he finds himself in a land between life and death, and prepares excitedly for his latest romantic escapade with his lover, Mistress Death. The two share perhaps the longest distance relationship in comics, only able to see each other during the time it takes for Deadpool's healing factor to reform his damaged body from otherwise fatal damage. However, to Deadpool's horror, he finds his significant other trapped somewhere she cannot reach him, pleading with him to save her. Deadpool quickly realizes that Doctor Doom's miraculous recovery was no fluke. In fact, it seems that suddenly no living thing on Earth can die. Confused by this bizarre turn of events and concerned for the well-being of his sweetheart, Deadpool turns to his old adversary Black Talon, a voodoo priest and expert in all things undead, not to mention the proud owner of his own private horde of zombies. While Talon explains he is not nearly powerful enough to prevent death on a worldwide scale, the supervillain reminds Wade of the curse of eternal life Thanos wrought onto him to keep him separated from his beloved. Deadpool surmises that Thanos must be behind the kidnapping of Mistress Death. After all, the Mad Titan has been after Death's affection for years. Realizing that he clearly has a Bowser Princess Peach situation on his hands, Deadpool vows to go full Mario. He plans to defeat Thanos, rescue his girlfriend, and restore the natural order of the universe. And cut back to Thanos beating Deadpool to less than a pulp, rescinding his curse of eternal life. Once again finding himself on the plane between worlds, Deadpool is visited by another vision of Mistress Death, desperately begging for him to come save her. The light is dwindling, she screams. I need you now more than ever. Meanwhile, across the galaxy, the Guardians of the Galaxy had the same idea as Deadpool, which is never a good sign, and set out trying to track down Thanos, blaming him for the imbalance that has stretched across the universe. Meanwhile, Thanos realizes that, for reasons unbeknownst to me, Mistress Death has chosen only to communicate with you, Wade Wilson of Canada Earth, and that the Merc with a Mouth just might be Thanos' only way to rescue his crush from wherever she's being held. With their interests aligned, for now, Thanos and Deadpool resolve to work as a team and save their mutual love from an uncertain fate. And that's just the first issue folks, we ain't seen nothing yet. But before we get into round 2, don't forget to drop a like on the video and subscribe to Plot Armor Comics with notifications on. Now back to the action. Deadpool vs Thanos Part 2 While hurtling through space with Deadpool in tow, Thanos does something we have never seen him do before. He writes a love letter. Thanos explains that without Lady Death at her post, many living viruses can't be cured, nor can they kill their hosts, leaving millions to suffer in a limbo of agony. Without any food sources, predators and scavengers of the natural world cannot eat and find themselves starving to death, unable to die. Organisms on planets being destroyed by exploding stars find themselves floating indefinitely through the depths of space. Thanos bemoans both the horrors and the joys of a universe without death, and he promises his beloved that he won't stop until he has returned her safe and sound to the mortal plane. He also finds himself pondering why one of the most powerful entities in the universe, Mistress Death herself, would turn to Wade freaking Wilson in her time of need rather than Thanos who has long since pledged his services to her and made his affections well known. 
Resentment for his new partner aside, Thanos believes to have found a clue in Death's message to Wade, and they arrive on a remote mining system named the Dwindling Light. On arrival, Thanos jokes about he and Thanos' shared love and devotion to Mr. Death, and their bonded status as Toboggan Brothers. Though now working together, Thanos does not hesitate to remind Wade, I tolerate your stupidity only because I must. And that Thanos cursed Wade to eternal life because no punishment is as cruel as having to spend eternity trapped with himself. The cracks in their partnership are beginning to form, and before long we'll see the universe spanning breakup brawl. Exploring the dwindling light, the most unlikely team up since, well, ever, finds evidence of necromancy and a violent cult of death worshippers ambush them on arrival. The Order of Glorious End battles Deadpool to a standstill, both sides unable to perish and therefore unable to lose. The Order finally bows down to Thanos, however, once they realize he committed the greatest act of murder in the universe's history the famed Infinity Gauntlet Snap, which they revere above all else. Calling Thanos the Great Avatar, remember that for later on, the Order reveals they recreated Thanos' snap in a sacred ritual that manifested the physical form of Mr. Death in the realm of the living, after which she was kidnapped by an unknown actor. So sorry guys, the princess is in another castle. Thanos and Deadpool realize they're gonna need another clue in order to rescue their mutual mistress, and Thanos proceeds to unceremoniously beat Deadpool to a pulp, again. For those counting at home, that's Thanos 2, Deadpool 0. Zero, so far. But wait! Before Deadpool can recommute his sweetie in the planes beyond, the Guardians of the Galaxy arrive, having tracked Thanos to the dwindling light. They accuse Thanos of somehow altering the nature of reality to prevent the universe from being able to die. A classic Thanos vs Guardians fight erupts as they try to save Deadpool from being murdered. With the combined strength of Groot, Gamora, and Drax, the Guardians are able to subdue Thanos, and Rocket is impressed with the intensity of Peter Quill's threats as they interrogate the Mad Titan. But before the Guardians can imprison Thanos, as he always seems to slip through their fingers, doesn't he? A revived Deadpool calls in the Order of Glorious End to launch a counterattack against the Guardians. Deadpool and Thanos are able to escape in the resulting battle between the two teams, but not before Abyss Man, an old employee of Weapon X that worked torturing Deadpool, and who may be more familiar to some as Francis, catches up with them and attempts to burn Deadpool to an ashen crisp. Abyss Man reveals that his boss ordered him to kill Deadpool for interfering in their affairs. Thanos eventually saves Deadpool by opening a vacuum on the ship and sucking Abyss Man into space, which marks both members of the team saving each other from near annihilation. But Deadpool explains that whoever Abyss Man is working for is the key to the next clue in finding Mr. Death. So the duo needs Abyss Man alive. We are halfway through Deadpool vs Thanos now folks, and if you're thinking how could this get any crazier, just wait. Believe me when I tell you that issue 3 is where things really go off the rails. And don't fret, we still have the fight to end all fights ahead of us. You really don't want to miss it. Deadpool vs Thanos Part 3 Issue 3 opens up with a gruesome flashback of Wade Wilson being tortured by Francis at the Weapon X facility, highlighting the cruelty and dehumanization Deadpool was subjected to at the hands of Abyss Man. After being shot back to consciousness once again by the healing machines of Thanos, combined with Wade's already prolific healing factor, Deadpool finds Thanos has subdued Abyss Man and has been tortured him for days trying to get information on his boss. Since Abyss Man literally came from hell, Thanos admits he was unable to get him to talk. But Francis did reveal to Thanos the history he shares with Deadpool. Thanos, upon hearing Wade's backstory, admits that he has gained some respect for Wade for being beaten down and left for dead, and still overcoming the odds by not only surviving, but becoming stronger for it. Thanos also tells Wade that he has surmised Abyss Man's boss from his origin story, and that the next step to freeing their beloved mistress death is to go through one of Thanos' most powerful old allies, Mephisto. That's right, Thanos and Deadpool's next adversary is none other than the devil himself. But so far, the duo has only needed to travel through the vast depths of outer space. Getting to hell to confront the devil is going to take a lot more than their little spaceship. Luckily, Deadpool knows a guy. Taking Abyss Man to our old friend Black Talon, the sorcerer is able to open a door to the underworld with his body. Thanos, Deadpool, and Black Talon all step through the portal to find and confront Mephisto and hopefully figure out once and for all where Lady Death has been kidnapped, and who has the power to kidnap a cosmic entity in the first place. Unfortunately, they do not arrive at the best of times as they are greeted with a full-on war that has broken out across the Hell Plains. Demons fighting demons, Hell Beasts fighting Hell Beasts. And most importantly, included in the ranks are every soul Deadpool and Thanos has ever sent to the underworld, waging war on one another. Black Talon explains that dead souls have a burning envy towards living ones, especially those that struck them down in the first place. And it becomes clear that Deadpool and Thanos have no shortage of enemies here. Not exactly masters of subtlety, it's not long before Deadpool and Thanos find themselves fending off an eternal army of enemies they have already slain. Tearing through hordes of angry souls, Deadpool and Thanos fight their way closer and closer to Mephisto's throne. 
At one point, Thanos' dead mother, Suisan, lunges at the Mad Titan, expressing her regret for having such a murderous son and promising to strike him down and keep him in hell forever. Deadpool strikes her down before she reaches Thanos, however, earning a rare expression of gratitude from his teammate and seemingly breaking down another barrier between the two unlikeliest of allies. Soon after, Mephisto stops the battle and attempts to trick Deadpool and Thanos into going after Mephisto's enemy, Satanish. Thanos, well versed in Mephisto's tricks, snuffs out the lie, however, saying, I know you're lying because your lips are moving, demon. Now tell me where you have her. Mephisto laughs and explains how his army of the damned is only armed through a constant influx of dead souls. Without Mistress Death, Mephisto would surely lose control of his realm to Satanish. But before the deal with the devil can be struck, Black Talon begins coughing horribly, suddenly seeming near death. His cough builds and builds until Mephisto's own terrible offspring, Black Heart leaps from Black Talon's throat and knocks Deadpool to the ground with a single strike. Black Heart announces his hatred for his father and his intention to destroy him, before Thanos intervenes after Black Heart insults the Mad Titan. Classic rookie mistake. Thanos vows, None shall insult the personage of Thanos, especially not the runt bastard of Mephisto. Meanwhile, the Demon Lord himself sits back gleefully, content to see his son and his old ally destroy one another in battle while he escapes the wrath of both. But before Mephisto retreats, Deadpool grabs him, announcing he has had another vision from Mistress Death, revealing to Deadpool the location where she is being held. Wade begs Mephisto to send him and Thanos to free their lover from her true captor the whole time. Eternity itself. Deadpool vs Thanos Part 4 Look folks, we're all gonna need to buckle in for this last issue. So far, we've been everywhere from Doctor Doom's secret vacation island, to the edges of known space, to the very depths of the Nine Hells. Safe to say, the only place Deadpool vs Thanos could have ended is outside of space-time itself. And don't worry, the epic, blockbuster, universe-spanning fight we were all promised is just around the corner. And we'll finally see, once and for all, who would win? Deadpool or Thanos? But first, he'll have to take on just about the biggest gun in the Marvel Universe, Eternity. Eternity, much like his sister Mistress Death, is a physical manifestation of a universal concept. He is, by all metrics, as close to a god as you can get in the Marvel Universe. And I mean that in the sense beyond those that are known as gods like Thor. Within his gargantuan cape, the cosmic entity contains all that ever has or will exist. Imagine the entire universe throwing a punch. That's pretty much what old Thanos and Deadpool are up against in order to free their girlfriend. Of all the enemies they've gone up against together so far, there is no question that Eternity is the most impressive and most dangerous. Eternity is upset at the outset of the climactic fourth issue. He holds Mistress Death in a cage in an abstract space removed from all space-time, keeping her from her sacred duty of allowing life in the universe to end. Eternity laments that he has grown increasingly distressed over feeling so many pieces of himself fall into Death's eternal embrace. Eternity revolves to remove Death from a rightful place within the cosmos, thereby saving himself the pain of having more and more of his inhabitants die and be lost forever. Before long, in between her, an emissary of two cosmic entities known as Master Order and Lord Chaos approaches Eternity to perhaps reason with him. Death's inability to take life has, as we know, caused much chaos within the universe, and in between her warns Eternity that these scales of balance are tipping in Death's absence. While Eternity is distracted, Deadpool, Thanos, and Black Talon arrive in the space outside the universe, and quickly go to work attempting to rescue their mistress from her cage. Upon arrival, Thanos immediately pledges his undying loyalty to his beloved Death with that quintessential Thanos melodrama quote, Mistress, I have traveled across this insult we call existence to find you, my love. As I once did before by slaying half of all life, I have proven my loyalty to you. Death all but ignores the affections of the Mad Titan and his eyes only for her true love, the incomparable Wade Wilson. This angers Thanos who once more strikes Deadpool down with ease in his fury at being ignored. As Thanos lashes out at him, he succeeds not only in wounding Deadpool, but crushing Death's cage, freeing her physical form. But despite freeing Mistress Death, the team is not out of the woods just yet. In his rageful frenzy, Thanos entirely blows the group's cover and finds a vengeful Eternity standing over him when he returns. Eternity dismisses in between her and turns the focus on ridding his extra-dimensional plane of the three uninvited interlopers, pledging to stomp them into nothingness for their indiscretion. Death warns her suitors that they will be atomized by Eternity's cosmic blows unless they take her hand. Doing so, Mistress Death transfers some of her infinite power to Deadpool and Thanos, announcing, for I am Mistress Death, and I may share myself with those who love me, whether it be a final embrace or sheer power, thereby anointing both of her rescuers as avatars of death. 
Death Pool, and Death Anos. With that, an epic larger than life battle ensues. Death Pool and Death Anos begin wailing on Eternity with their newfound powers imbued by Mistress Death. Death Anos gets the jump on Eternity as he attempts to explain his actions, and Death Pool follows up with a devastating blow, knocking Eternity off balance. After his first punch, Death Pool explains that he could feel planets and stars explode in his hand from striking Eternity with so much power. Death Anos jumps back and lands a crushing blow on the Cosmic God getting the drop on him and starting to choke him with his own cape. But even with Eternity subdued, Death Thanos refuses to let up when Death Pool suggests simply making their exit and returning Death to the physical plane. Death Thanos unleashes a brutal death ray on Death Pool, knocking him to the ground and begins choking Eternity further, planning to finish the job. Death Pool looks to Death for help, but she wordlessly takes back the power she granted him. Deadpool realizes that this is ultimately what Death wants to snuff out all life in the universe in one swift blow. Powerless and worried about the fate of Golden Girls reruns, Deadpool leaps onto Death Anos and stabs him in the back in a desperate attempt to save Eternity. Unfazed and still blessed as an avatar of Death, Death Thanos casually hurls Deadpool into the depths of Eternity's endless cage. Floating through space, still unable to die, Deadpool drifts silently through a living graveyard of beings whose planet exploded but are unable to perish in the cold vacuum of space. At this moment, when all seems lost, Deadpool is approached by the Avatar of the Uni Power, the cosmic protector of Eternity that grants the power of Captain Universe, and an ancient power wielded by many heroes over the years, one of which being Spider-Man, which we have an entire video dedicated to, so check it out after this one. The Uni Power asks Deadpool to become its Avatar and defeat Thanos to save Eternity. Back outside the universe, Thanos stands over a defeated Eternity, preparing to land the final blow and destroy everything that ever was or will be. Just before the Mad Titan can lower his fist for the killing strike though, Captain Unipool charges into action, using his formidable energy blast to keep Death Anos from murdering the universe. What follows is one of the largest, most overcharged battles in the history of the Marvel Universe. Thanos, imbued with the power of death herself, versus Deadpool, wielder of the immense uni power. This is the grudge match we have all been waiting for. Blow after blow is thrown between the two titans, without one prevailing over the other. During the fight, Thanos tells Deadpool that as an avatar of life, Deadpool has become everything the Mad Titan despises. But as they rage against one another, Deadpool reminds Thanos of the respect he felt after hearing Deadpool's history with Francis. How Deadpool survived impossible odds, but still managed to cling to life. Deadpool points out to Thanos that though he claims to worship at Death's altar, he ultimately respects Life's unwillingness to go quietly in the night just the same. As Deadpool and Thanos argue throwing punches the size of planets, Thanos slowly begins to weaken as he accepts the truth of Wade's words. When Thanos momentarily falls, Mistress Death herself considers Deadpool's words thoughtfully. As Death rescinds her powers from Thanos, the Mad Titan is no longer able to trade blows with the Unipower without her gifts. In one final detonation of cosmic energy from Deadpool, Thanos is consumed in the fire of a thousand suns. With Thanos defeated, Death calmly exits the extra planar realm, returning to her rightful throne without so much as a word to her former lover and savior. It seems sadly that although claiming ultimate victory over Thanos, the fiery love affair between Deadpool and Mistress Death may have become irreparably damaged by the altercation. With the battle won and the universe once again in balance, Eternity thanks Deadpool for saving his life. Deadpool gives Eternity a good talking to about ever imprisoning his sister again, and why death is not only a natural but essential part of life itself. Thus marking maybe the only time a Marvel superhero has ever had the confidence to give Eternity itself a lecture. But before Deadpool and Black Talon return to Earth, Eternity warns that while Thanos may have been completely obliterated by their fight, there is a chance Mistress Death may simply be hiding the Mad Titan for future nefarious uses. After returning to Earth, Deadpool attempts a second hit on Doctor Doom, asking him to kindly roll over and die, as it would only be fair considering Deadpool already got the jump on him once. Safe to say, that conversation doesn't exactly go in Deadpool's favor. Black Talon, on the other hand, hangs up his cowl, vowing to no longer worship Death after what he has seen. Black Talon releases his horde of zombies to self-autonomy and leaves his sorcerer's abode forever. However, in the glint of a cursed mirror at the back of the room, the blood-red eyes of the Mad Titan Thanos glare in at the world from the realms below. Well, how about that head-to-head -head battle for the ages, huh? And to no one's surprise, against all odds, the Merc with a Mouth takes the win. I have been Slice of Otaku of Plotomer Comics. Thank you all so much for watching and have an awesome day. I love you.